Hello and good morning. Let's take a look here. Have you ever written a check? Do you have a checking account? Okay, so let's talk about chapter two. And by the way, if you still have to take the test, it's still online for tonight. Okay, after that, you will have a zero until week nine. So um, take test and homework here. All right, on a new sheet of paper, copy down these notes, and I'll slide it up. And this is for periods one through six. All right, let's take a look. Checking account is an account at a bank <clears throat> where you make deposits, you withdraw money, and transfer money. A check is a written order to pay money. Electronic funds transfer, where you transfer money electronically, maybe to another person, maybe to a credit card. When you write a check, you are the account owner and you're considered to be the person drawing on your account. The payee, like an employee, a payee is the person you're writing the check to. Check clearing is where you have enough money for your check to clear. The funds are in your bank account. If you write a check um, without sufficient funds, um, you're gonna be charged for that. And uh, if you're writing bad checks, you could actually, uh, I'm sure there's some legal issues to that as well. An ATM machine is where you can bank without actually speaking to a teller. Well, let's look at example one. So turn to page 68. All right, so if you look at page 68, this is a deposit slip. And you can see that this person has written some checks or actually is depositing some checks. So the total is that amount right there but they're also getting some cash out, so that would be a minus, okay? So if you look at how they figured it out, um, they are actually depositing $795, okay? So you add up all these deposits, which is going into your account, minus the cash back, and that gives you your net deposit, okay? And apparently they had some money in the account before, which is right here. So the new balance would be this plus what they deposited, and there's their new balance right there. All right, on the next example, example two, let's take a look at it. This one right here, the way you work this, okay, and this is your register. Let's see what they call it. Okay. All right, so after you write the check, you can go ahead and uh, put this in your transaction description here. You want to bring down this number right here. Okay, and then this right here, you writ a, you've written a check, so that's going to be minus. So you're going to subtract these two, and they did it for us right here. So you see how they brought the number down? That's the beginning balance, and then they wrote the check. And then they got the new balance. They put a minus. This right here is a deposit. So you're going to add that. So you keep a running total of how much money you have in your bank account. And that's what we're doing today. So today you're doing 1 through 17. Page 70. If you need some help, ask. Let's turn our attention now to 7th period. Okay, so when you add or subtract fractions, and by the way, if you still have to take the test, it's open tonight. So test, and then homework is due as well. Make sure you get that in. This right here, you need a least common denominator. Well, six, three goes into six, so six is your least common denominator. So you want to multiply this by two to make a six here. So you're going to get one over six plus four over six equals five over six. Make sure you understand how to add fractions. And you might say, 
Well, why are we doing that? Well, because now we're going to do it algebraically. Okay, but before we do that, let's factor and reduce. So we're going to reorder this and put the square first. Okay, that's called standard form. And then down here, um, we're going to multiply 2 times 4 and get 8. And we're trying to get 9, so that's going to be 1 times 8 is going to add to give you a 9. So down here, you're going to rewrite this as 2x squared plus 1x uh, plus 8x plus 4. And actually, a negative and a positive, according to the chart I gave you, should be two negatives. So change that to two negatives, and that adds up to give you 9, which is what we want. This right here, you're going to group factor by taking an x out. This one, you're going to take out a negative 4. And when you do, this is the same as this. So this bottom factors as 2x minus 1, and then x minus 4. Once you have it factored up here, you're going to take out a negative. So we're going to take that negative out. This is going to change like that. This is a 1, so you want 3 times 4. So this top part is going to factor like this. You're going to have an x, a 3, an x, and a 4. You want a negative here to get the middle negative, and then a plus here. So now the x minus 4 is cancel, and you're left with this as your answer. Okay, this is a review, and that's how you do it. Now let's talk about today's work. Copy this one down. So, in order to add or subtract, you need the same denominator. Well, this is already factored. This is already factored. This is the difference of two squares. So, we're going to scratch that out and put x plus 1, x minus 1. Now, the least common denominator is going to be an x minus 1. You have one of these. So, you're going to write 1. You have an x. And then you have an x plus 1. So, it's one of each. Now, <laughs> Excuse me, here you have the x minus 1, but you're missing these two. So you're going to write x and then x plus 1 on top and bottom. And then here you have the x, but you're missing the x minus 1 and the x plus 1. And then here you have both of these but you're missing the x. So this one, all you have to do is multiply by x. Now you have the same denominators, and you have to add numerators. So what you got to do, and listen carefully, once you get to this point, you have to distribute. So 3x times x is 3x squared, plus 3x times 1 is 3x. This right here, you got to do FOIL, and then you got to multiply by negative 2. So x times x is x squared. This outer and inner is going to cancel. That's going to be a negative 1. So when you do that, you're going to get negative 2x squared plus 2. And then here, you're going to distribute, and you're going to get x squared plus 3x all over your least common denominator, which is all three of these. OK? Once you get to that point, you got to add your like terms. So let me think about this. This one and this one are like terms. This is another like term. And that gives you 4x squared minus 2x squared. So that's going to be 2x squared. That cancels. And then this and this is going to be plus 6x all over your least common denominator, which is going to be all of this x plus 1, and x minus 1. So this is a little bit of work here. Okay, copy this one down here, and then I'm going to get you started on your work. Okay, so number 1, you have to find your least common denominator. Well, you already have the same denominator, but you have to distribute this negative. So that becomes a negative x plus 4. Okay, so now the x's here cancel out. And 4 minus 1 is 3. So it's going to be 3 over x plus 2. And then you're done. <clears throat> That's it. Copy this one down. In order to get this one, you have to find your least common denominator. So you got to first factor this. 
So it's going to be x1, x2, you want a negative here and a plus there. This one is going to factor um, 2 and 3. So x2, x3, you want two negatives here. Okay, so you have one of these, x minus 2s, and one here. So the greatest you have is 1. There are two between both of them, but you want to know which one has more, and neither one. So you got one here, one here, so you write one. X plus one, no X plus one, so you have to put an X plus one. X minus three, no X minus three, so you have to put an X minus three. This is your least common denominator. So you ask yourself, what's missing here? Well, you're missing the X minus three. So you have to multiply by X minus three, top and bottom. And then here, <clears throat> you have the two and the three so you're missing the x plus 1. So you want to put the x plus 1 here, like that. Now you have the same denominator. So you're going to get 1 to both of these. It's just going to be the same thing. This is going to be a negative x squared right there. And this is going to be a negative x when you multiply x times 1 over your least common denominator, which is all of that. And you can rewrite it if you want. Last thing you do is combine like terms. There's no more of those. The x's cancel out, <clears throat> and you're left with minus 3 all over your least common denominator, and then you're done. So it's a lot of work, but you have to be able to do this. Okay? Today's work is right here, 41 to 50. Have a good morning.